Well, how about that? Three consecutive wins, all against division foes, and we welcome you to Vikings Game Plan from the beautiful TCO studios. It's Ron Johnson from Fox 9 and Vikings Game Day Live. Pete Bursich, analyst for the Vikings Radio Network, and some matchup numbers for you. Pete, let's begin with that minus 13 and the take give for Dallas. Holy cow. Right, when you're on a, a two-win season, that's the number that you look at first. We try to make this game overly complicated. You just watch the Dallas Cowboys against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers, right? Undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers really taking them to the wire, having a number of opportunities to win that football game, but they just came up on the wrong side. They've shot themselves in the foot over and over again. They're coming in here. We have a short week. They're coming off the bye. If they can fix that one number, Dallas Cowboys could be very, well, very tough to beat and could be, uh, you know, take us down to the wire. Yeah, that minus 13, that's about as bad as it gets at the midway point of the season. Dallas off a bye. And, and Ron, without Dakota Prescott, their, their quarterback, and he's fantastic out for the season, whether it's Gilbert, whether it's Andy Dalton, the pass defense for the Vikings, do you notice positive trends? Yeah, I mean, we, for what, three or four weeks, we were saying, how can you be 32nd, 31st, 30th in a lot of these categories? We're slowly but surely, after that Bears 149 total yards they were able to hold them to with Zimmer changing up different coverages, disguising blitzes. Now they've jumped up to 27th. Yes, that's still in the bottom half of the league, but that is an improvement. That's all you can ask for, and especially heading down what they're about to see, this gauntlet of teams they can beat. If they can continue on this path, they can end up mid-level, you know, almost maybe top 15, but they have to continue to play the way they're playing. Rick Spielman, general manager for the football team, joined my radio show X's and O's on the flagship KFAN, and we talked about one of those dynamic kids, Justin Jefferson. He's been phenomenal, and he's shown that the day one he walked in here. Now, it's getting used to the playbook, uh, understanding the schemes that we're trying to do. I think it's the chemistry between him and Kirk Cousins, and you see in that develop over time, and you know a lot of even the critical passing in the passes last night there are a lot of critical situations on third downs where it's not just stealing now we have a justin jefferson we have a couple of tight ends that are pretty good as well so you're starting to see him filter into what we're doing offensively but becoming a main part of it now and that's not only the confidence that we have him in as a player, but I think what Coach Kubiak has in him on making sure he's getting his touches during the game, and even our quarterback in the chemistry, they're working together. Ron, what is it at this stage of his career you really like about Justin? I mean, he makes you want to just fall in love with every route. Yeah. His patience, his ability to set guys up. As a rookie, to be able to take the leverage of a defensive back and use it against him. I look at the comeback against the Bears daunting defense. He was able to put just a simple comeback route in the red zone, which normally DBs know I'm not backing up into the, he got the DB to almost back up into the end zone. So that just shows one, how much guys respect him, how scared they are of his deep balls. And then the fact that he can come back and just put one foot in the ground. It doesn't take a whole bunch of steps for him to get out of there because the ball was thrown before he broke. He's just doing things that you don't see a lot from rookies and you look at receivers, rookie receivers that have had the kind of career he's had as a rookie. You got A.J. Brown, you got Randy Moss, and then Mike Ditka. I mean, he's in a group of names that are elite, and he's headed in that direction. What I also love is the fact that he's gone up against rookie corners, highly drafted first-round rookie corners the past couple of weeks and got the best of them. His, his catch radius, that's something we saw in his college tape that's translated to this level. He catches everything that is thrown his way and you gotta love it. And then what he does after he catches the football is amazing as well. Those grinding out those tough yards. I mean, why, you don't see wide receivers do that. Carry three or four people, four or five yards extra. And his yards after catch, that had, to me has been the most remarkable thing about his performance this year as a rookie.